What's up YouTube, Fantard here, here to give my review of Food Wars Season 2, Episode 2. Now this episode I thought was a lot better than the first because I felt like, I don't know why, the pacing felt much better. Either that or it was because of the canon material that they got from the manga, which I thought was excellent. Last episode I said that that was my favorite food. This episode is probably my favorite battle. I love this battle between Megumi and Kurokiba. And the battle is about ramen, and they go head to head having uh, similar ramens, but also very different types of ramen. With Megumi having a more light broth, at first it seems more light broth, where uh, Kurokiba has like a really strong broth. Now, at the beginning of this episode, we get Alice that I want to bring up real quick. She, uh, after she loses her match, we see her crying, and and the way they did it in the anime was good, but if you see it in the manga, it was a lot more. It was more co comical, I thought, in my opinion, because the way they had the angle in the manga and the way she was crying and the way the crowd reacted. If you if you haven't seen the manga, if you're just an anime only, go check out the manga real quick. It's really funny, the scene of her crying. Just go look at that scene of her crying and then go back to being an anime only. But I thought that was a lot more funny, uh, more comical in the manga than it was in the anime. It was still good. And then, so, going back to Kodakiba versus Megumi, with Megumi, what I love about this episode is that it really shows the character development of Tarakoro Megumi. Man, she is so confident out there as compared to before in the first season where she was having stage fright like none other. It was crazy for her. So and now she's in front of all this crowd and she's like nothing is facing her. And this guy, Kurokiba, of course, nothing ever faced him because he's always been an anger issued guy who would like owns people and stuff like that and like he owns the food he like destroys his food and he's very intimidating and so the dynamic between these two of them going against each other is very funny because you see Kota Kiba kind of trashing her style of way of life or the way she thinks of cooking he's saying oh every other thing you've learned about cooking is trash and then she like talks back to him and saying oh don't you trash the people who have encouraged me and he gets all angry he goes Argh! and she's like this is something I feel like saying it was just so funny and so like comical and I, I love her character development. She's grown so much, and I, I love Megumi, one of my favorite characters. She went from being a timid, shy girl to confident, not letting anything phase her, especially when the judges, they got up to go and watch her do her ramen cooking. And because apparently it's traditional to look at a chef while he's cooking ramen. And she nothing doesn't phase her at all. The crowd is like cheering her, Yuki's going all crazy. She's like, yeah, Megumi, you know? Uh, and then Alice sits behind them too, explaining how what Kodakiba does and what he represents and what his backstory is. So these to these two characters are both uh, raised off of seafood and port towns, and we get some uh, flashback on Kodakiba on what he was like as a chef. We find out he's I find out he's actually he's been a head chef ever since he's been a little kid, only in other adults. Other adults have been his underlings. And it's funny because he is a very crude kid. He tells it how's it how it is. He tells his uh, his other, his underlings, his uh, other chefs, other cooks that are like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. You piece of shit. You can't do this or stuff like that. And then the adults get pissed off. Oh, you think you could talk to us like that? And then Kota Kiba, as a kid, he's like, you think you can do a better dish than I can? And he has like these like black markings under him. If you think you can, I can easily replace your skills. No, no bother at all. You can get out of here. And then the chef apologizes to Kurokiba, and he com and continues running his running in his uh, his restaurant, his establishment. It's a very dark and very like clouded area where he lives. At it's very like just explains his character straight up. Because the reason why we find out about Kurokiba is because Alice was like was looking around this area. She's curious about this area. For we'll find out soon why she's looking around this poor town. Because Alice likes to watch him. She's like watching him from afar doing all this stuff. Because she introduces himself. She introduces herself to Kurokiba. And he's kind of like smug with her. He doesn't, doesn't really care about her. But we'll find out probably I think in the next episode. On why Alice was there in the first place. So as far as competition goes. They both hand out their dishes. And I, <laughs> I absolutely love. If this really feels like a shonen battle of cooking. It is fucking hilarious, man. You get Megumi and her and, and uh, Kurokiba. They both have their uh, um, <laughs> their vegetables and then he's got like his 
fish or something like that. I think it was either vegetables or fish or no scallops. I forgot what Kotohipo was saying. And they're like battling it out and they're like saying scallops, scallops, scallops. And he's like, I for, damn it, I forgot what he was saying. And they're just battling it out. And it's just freaking hilarious. And the animation was just really good. I love the 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 design. So uh, my memory card right now, I had to delete some couple of things. Hopefully I can combine these two videos together on uh, when I upload them. So uh, continuing off of the Food Wars, the the animation was really funny. I really liked the character designs on how in this episode, especially when Kurokibe, when he was serving his food, it shows uh, the way uh, uh, Nakiri Sazumo, he explains it as if like the way Kurokibe serves food as if he's knocking a bunch of people out like in a fist fight. And then like he faces uh, uh, Saz Sanzamon and then he like knocks him out and then <laughs> and then he goes bare chest and he strips down as if that's saying, oh, this food is amazing and great. And it was just so funny. And so towards the end of this uh, episode, uh, after the ending, we got a new ending too. Uh, he, he gets his big brush and he's about to ride down and then it leaves off of a cliffhanger on who's going to win. And we'll we're going to find out next episode. But one thing I want to also discuss was after Alice had finished crying, she runs into to Edina and she starts talking a little smack talk or she's, she's being smug how she always is but she says this one comment uh, uh, she, Edina says one comment when Alice walks away she goes I envy you to be able to just cry like that see that's a good uh, uh, foreshadowing on what uh, on what's going to happen with her character later on as she de continues to develop get more character development because Edina w with her characters it's always been about having this huge shell over her, covering who she really is, not being to uh, release, who, uh, you know, let loose, relax. She doesn't like showing her true self or true colors or being relaxed around people in front of a huge crowd or just in front of some friends. She's always trying to hide who she is. It's like under a shell that she's hiding. She And so, there's that, like, are we going to get some, maybe sh some, form, some sh form of shell breaking in this season? Hopefully, that will be really interesting to see what Edina goes through and how her character develops throughout the season with Polo Stardom and the rest of the, uh, and with Soma and the rest of the, um, the whole cast. So, as far as the ratings go, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 star. I really love this episode. Really great. And that's about it for my, for my review, guys. Hopefully, I can uh, put these videos together. Fantard out.